technology and bite and sing is a part of it. Okay? You already have things. This PowerPoint presentation is your book and also a, a sheet for reading. Before we start, by the end of this lecture, you should be able to know maybe three important genomic atropos. You could explain medical importance, you, the patho pathology and pathophysiology caused by these genomic atropos. And you should know and explain treatment and also prevention and control. And lastly, you, you may express good attitude and moral concern and ethics toward professionalism. As a doctor, what should you what should you do to your patient when they got sick from venomous arthropods? And the outline will be this. You, I will give you overview of arthropods that you already know some, and introduction to bite and sting arthropods category. You should know what envenomation is and how the how the body responds to such envenomation. And I should introduce some important bites and sting atropos to you. The general appearance, medical importance, and then treatment and prevention and control. Before everything, let's see what you already know about venomous atropos. You have a blank paper in front of you, right? Just answer this. Five to six questions. And let's take around 50 seconds each and just answer to your question. Ready? This is not formal, just. Okay. Do not open the book. This is the last one. Okay. Keep, just keep your answers and we come back for this later after lecture, okay?
from this morning, arthropods belong to animal kingdom, right? And then it was categorized into important classes, in insecta, arachnida, and crustacea. What? Could you tell the difference between each class? Yeah, very easy by numbers of names. And then we could classify deeper into order. And we have some specific and unique characteristics based on their, their order. As we know, arthropods are metazoic animals, invertebrate, and they have segments. They have high reproductive rates and great species diversity. So you will see so many, many arthropods everywhere. What is invenomation? Let's see, what is venom? Venom is a poisonous secretion forming fluid mixtures of any kind of, it could be enzymes, toxins, or any chemical substance, usually transmit to prey or to attack by bite or sting. So a venom is a substance. And envenomation is a process. Envenomation is a process in which venomous arthropods inject or transmit this venom into a body of other organisms. Okay. Now you know what is envenomation. I hope you, you are right about question number one. So there are thousands of thousands of venomous arthropods. These are some kind of important venomous arthropods found in Thailand. Spider, bee, wasp, or net, by ant, scorpion, anything. Could you give a Thai name for each of it? What is it? Uh, what is it, bee? Wasp? On it? Uh, by ant? Can fly. Scorpion? Centipede? Centipede is Sakha. Caterpillar? Boom. Wolf beetle? Good. And millipede? Millipede is Kingzu. Okay. You should know Thai name or common name because Haitians know. Only they only know Thai name. Okay? There are two kinds of envenomation. Is it active? Is it either active or passive envenomation? For active envenomation, venom is directly injected or transmitted to into body. It depends whether, how the venom would to be injected into body. For anterior station envenomation, the venomous appendage is attached or is located in front of the body. <coughs> Basically, the, those arthropods will bite with fangs or mandibles mainly for predating purpose. So the anterior station envenomation is mainly for hunting. You could see in centipede or what is it? Spider. For posterior station envenomation, the appendage placed behind the body. It could be sting. Mainly for self-defense for self-defense. Why is it? A bee would be stinging. Why is it? Scorpion. Some arthropods could bite and sting at the same time. It should be lesser. Besides active envenomation, there's a process called passive envenomation. These arthropods 
do not bite or sting. But the structure, the body contains skin, maybe in the hair, or the fluid, excretion inside the body, like caterpillar or roof beetle. Did you see in the CIs talking about roof beetle or no contradict when people contact with its secretion? It will cause a bird like emission, right? Did you recognize uh, how would it call the specific wound from roof beetle? Sitting lesion. Why is it? Yeah. It happens when you contact with toxin in your flexor area and you flex your hand or your leg. And two sides of your body contact each other and share toxin and cause the same lesion. Okay? We will not talk about this today because we talk about bite and sting. <coughs> so what is the response to envenomation? Firstly, basically, mechanical injury is your tissue will be injured by the process of like sting, sting or bite. It pain, inflammation, and you may have secondary bacterial infection if the wound is serious or you don't have a proper wound care. When you see patients, when they tell what happened, you can tell the difference between what if those are venomous or non-venomous approach bite. The non-venomous are always itching, but other symptoms are rare and minor and mild. Why the venomous Venom is a toxin, so the body is likely to respond aggressively against those venoms. You may have pain. It may cause allergic reaction and get swelling, redness, whatever, what extensive. Sometimes there would be a hypersensitivity when the body responds too much towards those venom. How many types of hypersensitivity? Four, right? There are five? Five, six? No. There is officially four types of hypersensitivity. One, two, three, four. You may recognize this. A, B, C, D. You see? One, two, three, four. A is allergic, anaphylactic, and atrophy. B is antibody. D, C. D. This is how you remember. This is from use my textbook. This is very useful. The main hypersensitivity is type 1 for bite and sting atropos. And we could see type 4 or 3 as well. But the main is type 1. I hope you, you still recognize this from immunology. Did you recognize that? Do you remember? Really? Okay. When the host got venom, there will be a process in which IgE is produced, right? And it will bind to mast cells, right? So the cell remember, this is the allergen. And next time you got the same kind of allergen, it will stimulate these mast cells to release vasoactive amine. So many substance to react to to react those tissues. What would happen to smooth muscle for type one hypersensitivity? Yes, there is a contraction. Where? Respiratory tract, right? Bronchus, bronchial. What happened? There would be bronchial constriction, narrowing airway, right? And compromise the respiratory. What would happen to blood vessel? Besides, it, it constricts your smooth muscle, it would dilate. Right? Your blood vessel. What will happen? 
Thirdly, if you alter vascular permeability, what happens? There will be exchange between fluid, intracellular and extracellular. What will happen? What will happen after increasing permeability? Yes, you can minimize vascular leakage. What happened? Yeah, swelling. What else for blood vessel dilation? What happened? Pardon? The same thing, anterior edema. What will happen if you've got vessel dilation in the body? Pardon? Oh, yes. What else? More importantly, yes. Your blood pressure may be decreased. Right? What will happen to new class plan? Your body will secrete more secretion, right? Your aqueous, your plat your platelets will be like aggregate, right? As you answer me, localized reaction would be redness, swelling, urticaria, itchy, rash. You may refer to insecticides. Will the patient see you if they only have local reaction? Will you see the doctor if you've got insecticides? Most likely, no. But when will you should see the doctor if you only got local reaction? For instance, what brings you to the hospital for insecticides? Just talk about localized reaction. Pain. It's painful, and then you see the doctor. Okay. If you see that like there is thing something foreign body within the, the victim site, just remove the thing. You provide cold compression, maybe analgesic. What is analgesic? It's painkiller, right? Paracetamol, whatever. Yamong. Is it analgesic? Isn't it? Yes, it helps. Antihistamine, topical steroids, and coconut oxide provide to patient. Serious consequence happen when it happens to systemic anaphylaxis. You have extensive urticaria with is itchy rash distribute the whole body. You have anterior edema. The blood pressure decrease and you may have some kind of signs of bronchoconstriction. How do you know your patient has bronchoconstriction? What what would patient tell you? Difficulty in breathing. What would you find from the patient? What is the sign of bronchoconstriction? For instance, yes, you may have there would be some kind of wheezing. It's a sign of narrowing bronchus and bronchospasm and anaphylactic shock. It's straightforward. Patient present with shock. Okay. The point is, you, you need to know that is anaphylactic shock, it could be recovered by providing suprimacin and antihistamine or systemic steroids. For those who are really sensitive to insect bites, just to clear the cold desensitization. Could someone explain what is desensitization is? What is it? It's like a vaccine, how? What is? You give a small dose of what the patient is sensitive to in order to stimulate the body to get used to it. Right? 
So next time you expose to such allergen or toxin, they'll be less likely to develop a serious condition. Okay? Type 4 hypersensitivity, why is it? The same thing, there will be antigen presenting cells to stimulate macrophage activity. So these cells will accumulate in the beaten site and will cause the beaten site firm, indirect and firm, maybe itchy, that's all. This is not a serious, serious. Normally, type 4 sensitivity happens from biting the saliva in the bitten side, maybe mosquito, maybe flea, that's all. So we just train awareness and itchy, itchy at that side, that's all. Ah, bite. Bees bite spiders and centipedes. Spiders is arachnid. That means they have how many legs? Eight legs, four pairs of legs. These two are important spiders. The spider bite cannot penetrate to deep tissue. They just bite superficially. So the lesions are more likely localized into bitten sites. Spider bite is also called a rash medicine. So scorpion bite is not the correct answer, right? This one is not true. You might see vision mask, this maybe redness swelling and profile tenderness. Some people might be too sensitive to spider bite or rash medicine and may have some kind of case discomfort and type 1 hypersensitivity. But it usually recovers in two, two days and maybe we provide anti-venom or supportive treatment. Centipede. Centipede is segmental arthropod with a pair of legs for each segment. There are two fangs connected in front of it. They usually hide in close and warm places. Centipede provide deeper biting into deeper layer of your skin. So it is more likely to be more painful. And centipede bite is the more painful one for arthropods, for venomous arthropods, and they will come to see you right away. Mm -hmm. If you localize swelling and redness with tenderness, what is the critical difference between the word pain and tender? What does it mean? Is it the same thing? Wow, come. What? Really? It's the same thing with some 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 kind of different. What is it? Oh I love your sentence, your colorful sentence. Pain is used when patients describe what they are, what they feel. Tender is a term when you examine the patient. So pain is a sign. Pain, sorry, pain is a symptom, but tender is a sign. Pain is when patients tell you how they feel. I feel pain, doctor. But it's just a plain word, pain. You don't know what is it, what is it, how bad is it, 
how long, how bad, where is it? What kind of pain they have? That's why you have to examine patient and you quantify. You could tell the characteristic of that pain. So it's cold, tender, mild. Is, is it mild, moderate, or severe, tender? You could tell the quality from examination. Okay. I'm sorry, this is wrong. It could be fine. Okay. You should know that. Okay. That's why I ask you. And co compression is useful and maybe you you provide patient with local injection of analgesic. And it's not soft soy and antihistamine. For staying you have scorpions and hymenoptera. Scorpions is also arachnid, it's nocturally active, it means it's active at night in the close warm place and it has terminal finger. The toxin could be divided into these two types of toxin. Hematotoxin, which is toxic to your blood system, and neurotoxin, it will hurt your central nervous system. So hematotoxin could be pain curing. What is ecchymosis? Where is it? Yes, it's bleeding. Where? It's ecchymosis. It's excessive area of bleeding, right? Like a patch of bleeding underneath your skin. For neurotoxin, you should know this. The patient could have mixed symptoms of adrenergic and cholinergic at the same time. So they could even have PNS hyperactivity or agitation, nausea vomiting, and they could also have salivation or tachycardia or muscle spasm. For treatment, just remove finger. You could use constrictive band to wrap up above the wound to prevent toxin spread out in your body. Cold compression and analgesia is always, work, always useful. And for CNS hyperactivity, uh, maybe we prescribe some kind of medicine to calm patient down, like barbiturate or diazepam. If there are signs of clinical side effects, you might provide atropine. Okay, and antivenin is also available. For hymenoptera, what does hymen mean? Hymen means membrane. So these arthropods have membrane ring, okay? You have these large interjected stones for five and <coughs> the matter is just a method for envenomation for bees. They have sting, stinger at the end of the body. But the terminal ends of the stings is kind of hooklet attached to the internal organ. So once they sting, the internal organ is more likely to be injured as well. So they are more likely to sting one and then they die. For me. But for us, the jackets or ornate. They could do multiple sting because the stinger is not attached to the internal organ. So they could cause multiple stinger in their lifetime. For fire ants, they have fang and sting. So they could bite and sting you at the same time. For fire ants. Venom could be any insecticide or enzyme, could be whatever. But melitin is the main main compartment for the toxin. Melitin and thymine. For clinical manifestation, of, of course, they could have pain, swelling, and redness, and might be anaphylactic method. Thinking about when people got 
stung by a bee, all right? What could happen? Sometimes the effect caused is they hate. So it's just not just a single a, a one bee attacking, right? Maybe the whole hive, like hundreds of bees. So serious consequences are more likely to happen when you got multiple stings. Enter bees or wasps, renal failure, serum sickness. What is serum sickness? What is serum sickness? It's quite free. What happened? What is it? When will it happen? Serum sickness. When it's foreign protein, right? Or inject in your body, in your circulation. And there is some kind of what is it? Antibody complex, right? Forming inside your body. From this slide, you see? Most of the genomes from Hymenoptera are some kind of protein or amine or peptide based genome. So this is protein compound. When they were inject or transmit enough in, in enough quantity and amount in your body, it could cause subsequently serum sickness later. It happened two or three weeks later. Just for this, okay? What is DIC? What is it? Nothing happened. just can't say what is it like it's disseminated intravascular intravascular that's all what will happen at first what will happen first for the IC something trigger right coagulation inside your body like stress right like trauma, and then what happened? That led some collaboration factor or consume until it's already it's gone, and then again your body will not have enough coagulation factor to work properly. So firstly, you will have like clotting phase. And then you have a bleeding phase. What slightly caused the IC? Stress, infection, right? The shock, whatever. You could read more about it. And of course, anaphylactic shock. This is angioedema and rash. This one, ah, take a look. This one is characteristic for fire and bite. No, bite and sting. It could develop a pustule here, small pustule with a fluid in it. It's, it's called sterile pustule. It's not a pus. It's not actually a pus. It looks like a pus. What should I say? Okay. Treatment, as I as I say, to gently remove the finger, but do not squeeze the wound. Squeezing may promote the release of more venom. So you do not squeeze your wound. Okay, just remove it. You do not squeeze to get thing out. Okay, to pinch it out. Remove it gently. 
full confession and I listen in as usual. The voice to the microphone and another music. And you see Christian's reaction is Christian undergo another lapses of there are three to four percent about three to four percent of in population who is who are highly sensitive to to hymenopteral women and just to bite no to sting because he has reaction like anaphylaxis. These people will carry at least an auto infection once they got serious anaphylaxis, maybe outdoor anywhere. The more when we go in jungle or anything, they could use this auto injection, inject it within into their body right away to handle those anaphylaxis reaction. These hymenoptera are attracted to like fruit or solution. So you just kindly cover your food containers and trash can, clear away garbage, foreign food, which is very protective for things. If there are hives in your household area, don't just leave it there. Uh, you should remove it by professional. Don't remove it by yourself. Remove it by professional. Serious consequence happen after multiple things from bees are two to three hundred things you cause serious effect like anaphylaxis shock, but for us it's just thirty things could cause serious consequence. Just slowly walk away from there because one bee sting it could release a pheromone to attract other bees. To sting you, walk away. Just walk away. Don't go in at the first place, actually. But if it happens, just walk away, okay? And maybe desensitization help. So, for food practice, a actually this lecture that has nothing complicated, it's straightforward, right? But you must know because this is, it is one of your common practice. When you become doctor, Christian will see you. Carefully assess for medical history, are you allergic to any specific kind of arthropods? Why is it? They might even bring you live arthropods. This is what has bitten me, doctor, like a fish long centipede, something like that. So you should know the underlying disease, are they immunocompetent or immunocompromised? Are they have, do they have a history of allergy or anything? Beware of hypersensitivity or anaphylaxis. Look closely to their vital signs, blood pressure, heart rate, how they breathe. The main reason they will come to see you, they have, they are in pain. So you should manage pain properly because pain could compromise body function physically and also emotionally. I believe before they come to see you, they already help themselves, right? They might have first aid, they might take care of themselves, but it's not enough. That's why they see you. Okay? And patient education, you should tell patient what to do and not to do. Do not squeeze, wound, something like that. You should you could even tell them what what should they do if something wrong happens, like in emergency, the phone call or emergency service. What is it? What if if something happened in your house, like emergency condition, you wish to call for help? How do you do it? What is the phone call? 
one what? One six six nine. What is it? Thai people, anything they will call police, and policemen in Thailand can do a delivery, like a bird delivery as well. They pick up cat or dog in on the street, and even you have like snake in your house. It's not a job. What is it? If you have a your health emergency, one six six nine. Okay, you could you could teach your patient if something wrong. You could tell them if they are highly sensitive to venomous arthropods, some kind of it. You have some kind of like vaccine or immunization against it. You could do for treatment as well. Okay, so let's get back to the quiz. Let's do it together. Okay, what is envenomation? It's a process, right? In which venom is injected to human body. Mark yourself. What is a poisonous substance produced by arthropods? This is venom. This is immune response. Which one is not an active envenomation? Which one? Ah, contacted with rope needles. Sang bitum bitum. Okay. What is the major immune response to envenomation? Type two, right? Oh, sorry, type one. So it's master stimulation. Yeah. This is type four. This is type two. What is the immunity against what? Normally, something huge, like vermin. Okay. Which one is false? Ah, bees. They have little sting, sensitive, cause bee bite, right? And fire and it bites and kill you at the same time. What is a rat bitten? Bitten by what? Spider, not scorpion. The dog. Which is not an anaphylactic reaction? It's not. Bee boy, right? It's bronchoconstriction. Right. Okay. For ICE and sensitized matter, this is a primary process for anaphylactic action. Right. Okay. Which one is not a proper management for bite and sting? Okay. Cold compression is useful. Tetanus toxin is mandatory. We remove a stinger, but we do not squeeze. Okay. 